This video has been brought to you by Aki Bento. Stay tuned after the video for an unboxing and a t-shirt giveaway. Free t-shirts! Well, I just finished watching this show and I must say I'm thoroughly impressed. Oh my god, this show is precious! I freaking love all the characters. Can I adopt them? I'm adopting them. They're my children. We're witnessing the real struggle of anxiety from two different perspectives, which is rather intriguing. Have you seen all of the pictures online? Oh my god, everything about this series is precious! I have to share all of them. Sure, this series is not perfect, but the overall story and presentation gave a strong and powerful impact on the anime community. Everything about this show is perfect and oh my god, look at the merchandise! Everything is so precious! <laughs> Well, that was a random reference from five years ago. Well, this was a long time coming, but now I'm finally here to address the best anime of 2016, which that claim in itself brought some controversy. A show full of love and inspiration being the center of controversy for what reason now? Well, let's find out as I'm here to proudly review Yuri on Ice. Yuri on Ice tells the story of Yuri Katsuki and Yuri Plazetsky. For the sake of this review, we're just going to call Yuri Plazetsky Yurio, because he rhymes with Cheerio. After suffering a devastating loss at the Grand Prix Finals, Yuri highly considers returning to his home in Hatsetsu and retire from skating for good. One day, he decides to perform his favorite routine once performed by the current skating champion and renowned skating god Viktor Nikiforov. Little did he realize that he was being recorded by a set of triplets who at a very young age know how to perfectly upload onto the internet and use the right keywords to make the video go viral. Yeesh, even these babies do a better job than I do. You know, coming from a generation born before the internet became a household necessity, interneting is hard. No, I'm not a grandma. The video, of course, gets Victor's attention, so out of the blue, Victor decides to take a year off of skating to become Yuri's coach, promising him that he'll win gold at the Grand Prix Finals. However, when Yurio gets word of this, he runs down to Hatsetsu to take Victor back because of a promise he made to make a winning choreography for him if he won the Junior Grand Prix Finals. But first, he has to take a very important selfie. Deal not, Victor. I'm going to hunt him down to make him my coach! My god, I need that short INSTAGRAM, BITCHES! I HAVE MY PRIORITIES RIGHT! If Yuri wants to keep Victor as his coach, he's going to have to give it his all while competing against one of the best skaters in his field. Can Yuri come to grips with his anxiety and prove that he can be a worthy competitor? And why would Victor drop everything just to be his coach? Already, we're not dealing with an original story, but this version of the skating underdog has an interesting aspect you don't really see in shows nowadays. In most typical stories centering a hero facing an obstacle, there's usually the typical tropes that any of them would face. Competitions, training, optimism from their friends who believe in them, and of course having a rival or a bully trying to tear them down. However, in this case, while some of these obstacles are present, the biggest obstacle that Yuri has to face constantly is self-doubt and anxiety. Even when with a loving support group by his side and copious amounts of training, he can still mess everything up when his head is filled with doubt. Plus, it doesn't help when your mother tells you right before a competition that your dog is dead. Mom. Mom. Seriously, Mom. How can I perform and concentrate while thinking about my dead dog? What the hell, Mom? In Yurio's case, he's lived his whole life following a strict regimen that only gets harder and more frustrating. In a field raising him to be perfect, he never wants anyone to look down on him, so he constantly lashes out at everyone around him while rarely getting comfortable with anyone outside his comfort zone. Already, we're seeing two different dynamics of anxiety. In comes Victor, who wants to find a way to make these two more confident not only in their routine, but also in themselves, as cheesy as that sounds. The way he approaches their problems, however, is to take them away from their comfort zones and transform them into something they could never imagine. Yurio must embrace his emotions while expressing an angelic innocence to the theme of agape, which means love in the sense of goodwill and purity. Meanwhile, sweet little shy Yuri over here has to embrace his sexual side as his theme is eros, which means sexual and erotic 
love. While this makes any fangirl squee in delight, keep in mind of the context. For someone who's never been in a relationship, has zero confidence in himself, and gets easily shy around others, this is going to be his biggest challenge, as he has no idea how to be so confident as to express something similar to seduction and lust. Victor gave them these challenges so they can experience something they've never felt before, which can both help them grow in some ways. However, Victor is far from perfect, as he still needs to learn how to deal with other people and their problems. As far as we know about Victor, he just loved the sport so much that inspiration just came to him easily, and he would pour his whole heart into his routines. While he knows how to put on a good show and how to challenge both Yuris, he doesn't really know how to be a proper coach. As in, he could say things that would naturally motivate himself, but may have a different effect to Yuri's mentality, like in this scene. It is at least partially my fault if you mess up your program today and don't make it onto the podium. I'll take responsibility and resign as your coach. <sighs> oh, just tell him that his dog is dead again. Don't break the poor man! Victor has to find a way to motivate an already fragile soul, but also has to help him grow from his old habits and find a way for him to improve. This is basically why Yuri Katsuki was awarded Best Male Character of 2016 runner-up. He shows the human flaws a lot of us can relate to while showing just how much it sucks. While other heroes demonstrate just how great of a person they are and how we all wish we could be them, Yuri shows just how easy it can be to step backwards. While some of the fans thought that the segment at the end of episode 11 and the beginning of episode 12 was slipped in for drama, those who suffer from anxiety like Yuri can definitely understand why he almost did what he had to do. I am trying way too hard not to spoil anything right now. While I seem to only be addressing the heavy tone featured in this show, it's also a delight to watch with all the characters and how they interact with each other. We meet a wide variety of performers, each with their own vibrant personalities, to which I would totally spend an awesome weekend with them just chatting and laughing it up. However, this brings us the first problem with Yuri on Ice. So many characters, so little episodes. We all came to love these personalities only to barely spend any time with them. We know more about our main trio, plus the competitors who make it to the Grand Prix Finals, but a part of us really wanted to get to know the others. We do get some backstories with them during their routines, but are then left in the background while the others take the stage. Another down point others have brought up, but wasn't really a problem in my case, was the actual sport itself. There are shows that can really get you interested in the sport, and some that just don't. Yuri on Ice is somewhere in the middle, where we go into detail over how the characters compete while animating their routines individually, but skating as a sport doesn't appeal to everyone. I, however, love the sport ever since it was a popular topic in the 90s, where performers like Christy Yamaguchi, Michelle Kwan, and Scott Hamilton were basically popular celebrities everyone knew. But like any other sport, you're gonna have the ones you like and don't like. On the topic of animation, that's where we can agree with a lot of the angry comments. The intro was was gorgeous and accompanied by an amazing song, and some of the scenes are animated really well, but a lot of the choreography shown on the screen came off a bit clumsy and rushed. I understand that Studio Mappo was experimenting with the famous technique rotoscoping. It felt they had to speed up the process, which results in some poor quality animation. A part of me hopes that it gets polished with its upcoming release because a lot of these scenes show us the potential it could have had. Yes, this show has its flaws, and the ending could only end one way with how they develop the story, but all the elements that truly make this series shine is why a grand majority praised this show. However, in this particular year of anime, we witness an ever-increasing rise of comments voicing their opinions regarding the best anime of the year. To which, thank you so much, Crunchyroll, for starting this down spiral of salty comments because you allowed your audience to vote for what they considered to be the best. And while some would say these complaints sprouted given the feature relationship and the fandom that followed, I I honestly believe it's mostly due to other fandoms from other popular shows feeling cheated. I mean, seriously, if people actually believe it won just because it appealed to the Yaoi fanbase, then how could we even forget all the other popular titles that are clearly the best anime ever made? You don't know these titles, do you? Exactly. 
This was the year of clashing fan bases. Yuri on Ice vs Mob Psycho vs ReZero vs My Hero Academia. Each series featured huge fan bases with their own voices. Fans are obviously going to cling on to their current favorite title and praise it as the best show of the year, but everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Plus, we all can agree that extreme fandoms for any show can easily ruin the experience for everyone. Some people won't watch Yuri on Ice because it attracts Yaoi fans, while others won't watch Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid because of the Moe fan base claiming their dragon waifus, including the one that looks like a child. Oh, what a wonderful world we live in. Aren't fandoms just great? But we can also agree that we shouldn't let the extreme fandoms and labels ruin anyone's experience. To each their own, I say, and just let people have their fun. Now, there's one other element I haven't addressed because I wanted to save this for last. That would be the relationships between not just Victor and Yuri, but with everyone. As I have addressed how both Yuris are facing their own forms of anxiety, we see them transform into stronger individuals through the love they receive from others. Yes, Yurio is still a raging fireball on skates, but we see him become more honest and less agitated, to the point where he even forms a bond with Yuri through their journey. Both of them throughout the series transform through the love that they have yet to realize was there to begin with and how it expands the more they grow. Yurio would only confide with his grandfather, only to now have a bigger family with his fellow athletes, including a random friendship that now has its own shipping with Odebeck. Gee, I wonder why. Damn, that ship is speeding away now. In Yuri's case, the challenge Victor gives him tests his confidence in which he grows and finally sees the effect love can really have in his life. All of his life, he thought he knew what he wanted while pursuing it, but he never really knew how to take care of himself and never realized just what love could do for your mentality. How he becomes more confident and stronger through the love he receives from his family, friends, and from the one he truly loves the most, Victor. And this is truly the heart of Yuri on Ice, the love Victor and Yuri have for each other and what it can do for them. As I plan to go forward, I will be going into spoiler territory, so just get to this time frame here if you want to avoid spoilers. Love is the key to this story, as we see how it impacts their lives, whenever they're together or apart. How in this scene where Yuri is coming home after having to compete by himself, and his anxiety levels are just... Huh? Are we having a hugging competition now? <laughs> JJ style it. No! Stay away from me! <laughs> Not so good. He instantly feels better when he's finally able to hold Victor in his arms. How when Yuri believes that he's only holding Victor back and wants to retire early, downright shatters Victor's heart as he can't imagine skating without Yuri. This way you can make your comeback. Stop, I don't want to hear it. How can you tell me to return to the ice when you're retiring? And when Yuri changes his mind and wants Victor to be his coach further, it instantly makes Victor immensely happy, while also adding that he expects at least five more championships, thus giving Yuri the confidence he desperately needs to go forward. And lest we forget the kiss scene around the world where Yuri has given his best performance thus far and Victor cannot contain his joy, because he is just so proud of Yuri and how far he's come. Even with how a fandom's mind can wonder, the majority of the fans sees this relationship as precious. Just look at how Victor praises over our ever so blushing Yuri. Even with their silly moments, this couple is precious. This is one of the most loving, warm, and open relationships, giving hope and inspiration to others. How instead of dreaming of a fantasy waifu and husbando, many were wanting to have a relationship like Victor and Yuri's. One that is full of love, patience, and support. It's a relationship that can actually exist as a lot of us want a partner who will be there to hold us up while not enabling our bad habits. This isn't necessarily a perfect relationship, but one that can last a lifetime with just how badly they need each other in their lives. It isn't just Victor helping Yuri. In some ways, Yuri is helping Victor. I could go on and on over what makes this series great, but I don't want to ramble too long. If you've never seen the show, but were always curious, be sure to check it out and tell us what you experienced. Many voices will give you multiple reasons why you should or shouldn't watch the series, but all that matters in the end is what you want for yourself. Funimation will finally release this series around Valentine's Day 2018, and we can't wait to get our copy of it. Whether you're a sub or dub lover, both performances are wonderful to listen to, though I will always have a soft spot for the English dub, as the 
chosen cast sounded perfect in their roles. You can tell Josh Greeley and Jerry Jewell adored their characters with how believable and warm they sound. Tell me, have you had a pork cutlet bowl recently? Sure, they're my favorite, so I eat them all the time. Oh yeah? But you haven't won anything, have you? <laughs> The same can be said for Mike Asala's side, who became excited to perform as Yurio, to which he gave an adorable performance as this hot-headed Russian fireball. Hey! Victor, come out! Do you hear me? <gasps> that shirt! I wanted no! And then there's Chris Sabat as Kristoff, to which points to you, sir, for carrying that one scene professionally. Yuri, your innocent sexuality is powerful. But if there's one person in the world who can rival that, it's me. Yeah, Chris getting way too excited during his performance is not something we can easily defend. No, no, seriously, you guys, this is an incredible show full of love and support and... God damn it, Chris. Y really? Chris. Is it just me or does the ice look soaking wet? Yes, this show has over-the-top moments, which is an understatement when talking about episode 10, but the way the characters enjoy their lives with little to no shame is a factor we can't help but enjoy. Not to mention that this is a world where Victor, a man from Russia, can openly kiss another man while not getting in trouble with his country and even have a room applaud him for being engaged. That is something we wish could happen in reality, but it's sadly not the case. As someone who who looks for both the positives and negatives, I can't help but appreciate this series for all that it's done for the audience. It's inspirational, wonderful, and a joy to watch for us. But like with any other anime, we know this won't appeal to everyone for their own reasons, and that's fine. Overall, we here at Anime America love this show and all that it gives, so we highly recommend it. If you're in the mood for a show full of wonderful characters and a story showing how love can leave a powerful impact in your lives, we can't recommend enough Yuri on Ice. Thought you'd like to see what a skater's body really looks like. Hmm? Go ahead, drink it in. Don't be shy. You got it all, believe it. When you fold it up, hey, hey. If you fold it up, I'm gay. I have crippling depression. Come on, let's make the J sound together. Gay or European? It's hard to guarantee. Is he gay or European? Well, hey, don't look at me. I find the figure skating to be kind of sexy. But there's that pair's figure skating and there's that one very special lift where the male figure skater goes, Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? <laughs> and I'm going, let's cut the foreplay. Let's have ice f***ing. Come on! I'm super. Thanks for asking. All things considered, I couldn't be better. I'm a thing. Man, you don't know how many I've had my just to get this. Grandma, <laughs> it's me, Anastasia. Squonk along, guy, leave me alone! That's when you need to push yourself to the test And show us the passage of time We're gonna need a montage We want to take some montage Tell me more, tell me more Did you get me with Tell me more, tell me more Does he look like a bitch? But first, let me take a selfie
again, this video has been brought to you by Aki Bento. This month's theme was Revival, and inside the box we have ReZero Volume 1 Manga, this badass t-shirt featuring Rem fusing with Ichigo Zangetsu, this, okay, okay, let's just take a look at this, an Aki Dearest scarf. I'm not kidding, look at this. This month's YouTuber is Aki Dearest, and we have an Aki Dearest scarf. Let's just take a step back and take a look at this awesome scarf. Now I can wear Aki Senpai wherever I go. My life is complete. This box also has this Fullmetal Alchemist bento box, aka the cutest bento box ever, an Ichigo sticker, a Fullmetal Alchemist car freshener, mmm, strawberries, and this awesome badge featuring Subaru and Rem. Next month's box's theme will be Guardian, which will feature products from Naruto Shippuden, Sword Art Online, No Game No Life, and One Punch Man. Click on the link down below and use the code word ANIME to get a nice discount on your first purchase. Aki Bento is also selling our sticker in their store as as well as printing the same design on their t-shirts. For every t-shirt sold, a good portion goes back towards Anime America, so you'd basically get an awesome t-shirt while also supporting the production. Aki Bento gave us a free shirt to give away for you guys, so if you'd like the chance to win a free t-shirt from us, leave a comment down below using hashtag Aki Bento shirt and tell us what your favorite sports anime is and why. The winner will be announced in the comment section and on Facebook and Twitter before the new year starts, so good luck everyone! Thanks again for watching this video! If you wish to keep up to date with Anime America events, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and even Tumblr. If you want to support this channel, be sure to click on the notification bell to keep up with our video uploads, as well as liking this video and sharing it on any social media platform you choose. If you wish to support us financially, we have a Patreon page with numerous rewards to fit your budget, as well as sell posters on Store Envy and t-shirts on Teespring. Don't forget to subscribe to Anime America for more awesome reviews and top 10 lists. We also have a sister channel called Pop Spectrum where we review anything in pop culture. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned to Anime America!